Okay, so this is take three because I keep spurring out because Sharif isn't here to babysit me. Uh, I can yap for hours to a person that's not talking back to me, but if I do it to a phone that's not talking back to me, then I just fucking spill spaghetti everywhere. But this is a 22 minute video. I'm not writing walls of text. And, um,. But I don't want to say nothing either, right? So, you guys are finally getting the voice messages that were promised on day one of FBED. Our voiceovers, not voice messages. This is session one. Um, it was like a week ago, so I don't fully remember everything. Uh, I, I did a bit better there on Incline Bench on the first set, but then the rep drop-off was shittier. Um, not that anyone cares, because it's Smith Machine, right? So who gives a shit? But, I, uh, I don't know, I feel like my strength has been a bit all over the place, in terms of, like, my pressing strength, and maintaining it this cut. I'm almost at the end, as you saw from the chart, like, I'm at 182 or something, and I'm kind of struggling to break that plateau, but I think I'm about to break through it soon. Um... Okay, here, I only did three sets of the pushdowns, because I'm just doing three sets of all my volume-waving exercises. This is because I expected this to be the last week of the cut. I didn't expect the weight loss to slow down right when it did. Uh, today's my rest day, and if I weighed in at 180 today, then I would have um, done my maintenance phase and deload week, but I didn't i'm 182.8 today i couldn't take a shit today i it just wouldn't come out no matter how hard i tried so i um maybe maybe i'm 180 post shit uh i'll never know but um by the way it's about to be <laughs> this session was june <sighs> fuck i forgot listen dude it <laughs> It was a week ago, okay? I wanted to say it because I'm not going to say it for every session, but this is session one. This is about to be the last footage, right? So I want to, I'm not, I'm not going to write it. I'm not going to edit it in to say session one, two, three. I just, I don't care. So that's why I'm saying this. Uh, but yeah, after these lottery raises, it's the end of session one. And um, what the fuck was I saying? I couldn't make my way in for this week. So I'm going to have another training week that I didn't expect. But, uh, I, okay, this is session two. I, I'm not going to lose my train of thought this time, though. But on this day, uh, actually, this is perfect timing. So on this day, I had my deadlifts, and it was up to 215 kilos. You're going to see it in a sec after a bunch of shit nobody cares about. But I, um, I went up to 215 kilos, because I've been just adding five kilos a week. And, um... It moved fine. I I don't know. I, it moved really... Technically, I think that was a, a five rep PR. Like, obviously not an ability PR. There, I, That's not the most I've ever been able to pull for five reps in terms of, like, what my ability would be if I went all out. But nor was it all out. And, um, and I was hoping end of cut to be able to get 220 kilos for five. You'll see it in a sec. Based on how it moved, you can see my back gives out a little. Uh, I think my brace was shit. Part of it is because I wasn't doing my pause deadlifts and my off-the-floor position has been kind of shit. And you can definitely see it on the back offsets where you can see I misgrooved a little and I had to correct myself at walkout. You can see that in a few seconds. But, um... Yeah, I wanted to hit 220 kilos for five, end of cut, because I feel like that would set me in a really good position for the start of the bulk for the goals I want for this, um, for this upcoming bulk to 220, you can see I fucking had to do some weird shit there, but, um, yeah, I want to bulk to 220, I want to start at 220 kilos for five, the one nice thing about my cut not ending this week is that I'll actually get to do that next week, because I'm very confident that it'll move just fine, really happy with how little cutting has affected my deadlift, deadlift strength, um, I almost misgrooved my speech there. I, oh, I only did two sets here of the rows, because it was fucking late. Um, 
rare moment of like rationality for me actually like cutting some volume to not leave the gym at 3 a.m but i um yeah i'm really happy with how my deadlift strength has maintained this cut i historically deadlifts always took a big hit for me in my cuts because i always had the i, I just sucked at cutting back then and i also just i never had it like any en any energy because um, I wasn't eating enough carbs in the past. Like, I'd always go anemic midway through my workouts and shit. Because um, I was a steak and egg schizo. And, uh, until uh, Razor Boy clear pilled me on Renaissance periodization. And I just started listening to all of Mike Isertel's diet advice. And just doing whatever he tells me. But now, strength maintaining very well. I feel like... All the things I want in my double strength for this bulk are very, very attainable. I want to get to the mid 600s on my deadlift. I don't know how long this progression will, I'll be able to run for. It's it's basically I start at like, it's your typical like linear progression where you want to start and end higher uh, at the start at end of your block in my case is a six week block just because it's designed around my volume waving that up for my bodybuilding work um is that ideal i don't know but my friend at the gym told me to take bigger jumps under the block is that just kind of meta uh so the plan should be basically next bulk i will start the block at 200 by week five i should be at 220 again and uh and then uh what we'll do would jump to 230 for the final week kilos on the deadlift for five and i'm hoping yeah hoping for good things i think at that point i should be about four pounds heavier if my calorie tracking goes as planned but we will see um okay but yeah, that goes into just my overall goals for this bulk and, and what I want. I want two specific lifts. Now three, kind of, I guess, because I added weighted dips and I'm starting to really fall back in love with them. But I'm still mostly like kind of hypertrophy selling them. I'll I'll explain my progression that I'm using on them in, in a few clips. But um, I'm mostly just focusing on uh, deadlifts and OHP because those are two lists that I historically just had a good relationship with for strength, especially the deadlift and OHP before FBET was a very big strong point of mine before I started trying to fucking bench. You can see shitty misgroove on the OHP, but I still got it. Um, I'm just microloading the first set and then doing percentage based backdowns to actually build volume ideal no do i care no i just like if i just cared about bodybuilding i wouldn't even do the heavy set at the start but that's just kind of oh these were really shit by the way i raised the seat because i felt it a bit more in my uh in my chest than my shoulders but it also led to really just losing a lot of reps um but anyway so yeah, I just, I don't know. I want to get stronger, like, as far as just strength, strength on OHP and deadlifts. Other lifts, I'm purely hypertrophy selling. Dips are kind of in between because um, I, I'm running the Matthews Lat beginner program for dips. If you don't know who Matthews Lat is, he basically, I think he dipped like 300 kilo total did a body weight plus the weight which is insane because it's a really good squat done with the upper body squat he's kind of like a goat of street lifting and um i'm running his beginner progression just because it appeals to me like it um it's not really some program with like fucking blocks and and pro like linear progression and bullshit and reps and reserve and stuff like that like most strength training it's it's just a really simple auto-regulated progression based off your performance 
on your set. So I don't remember it off the top of my head because I have it written down. But you do like around, basically you go to failure on your sets and then based off what you get on the final set for reps, that it will dictate how much weight you add next time. If you only get five, the bottom range, you only add half a kilo. And if you get eight, then you add, oh fuck, I think it was like, I, don't, I think it was five kilos. So I'm just running that. Is it consistent every time? Not really because, okay, wait, no, I'll, I'll get back to that. Pause deadlifts, very happy with these. This is my lowest weigh-in. This is session three. No, that was session three. Session four, I forgot to say it. This is session four now, and this is the AM session before then the PM session, because I can't fucking do all this in one go. Very happy with that, um, because they um, those pause deadlifts felt better than the warm-up for my 215 kilo deadlifts at the same weight, roughly the same weight felt. So, like, they felt easier than the just the straight deadlift like not paused did so and that was my lowest weigh-in of the cut 181 so i i think 220 might be easier next week than 215 was we'll see though but and i'll get back to what i was saying about the dips in a sec but these pelican curls slash bayesian curl whatever i don't give a shit they um i i follow gvs on instagram and he was complaining about the fucking renaissance periodization goofy looking lying dumbbell curl which, which is like an incline curl but then you're fucking your arm your arms are back and you're just lying and you're trying to it's almost like a peck fly but then you're curling it. it's like it, it is a goofy looking exercise but i'll give one thing to them like i personally know the feeling of struggling like get meaningfully sore in the biceps for example and from personal experience muscles that i can get like many days in a row soreness on consistently from the same exercises uh day in day out those are the ones that grow the most for me my triceps um my hamstrings my quads i i shit quad strength but they grow well for me like visually Again, maybe it's just insertions that trick me into thinking they look bigger than not because they they do have a decent sweep. Um, but calves too, I think they're still over seventeen inches. I'd have to remeasure, but you end up like you can see them kind of popping through the sweats there. Like I don't show them all the time, but like the the donkey calf raises do their thing and they make me sore for a long time. Um, my back and triceps, yeah, those are two of the most easily sore muscles for me. They also grow the most for me. Like, there's just fucking, like, it's not hard to see a correlation there. Like, I'm not going to be gaslit and told that there's nothing going on. But with biceps, like, th these exercises that are really milking the stretch, I just feel more soreness. And I, for more days in a row, over and over, even though I've done these exercises a few weeks in a row now, like, he was, he was saying, oh, it's, it's fucking bullshit it's like, I think he's coming from a good place because RP has been being like really strange um, in the type of shit they're promoting and saying and whatever. Like, Mike just did that front squat video. was fucking stupid. But um, I, I'm kind of with RP that, like, if you never feel your biceps, that might be good. The one thing I don't like about it is that you're kind of having to do an isometric pec fly to keep it engaged. But I feel like that also kind of keeps the bicep engaged at the shoulder. Like at, at the end of the day, like it's, it can be another variation to add to a list of variations. I, I've struggled with bicep growth. I've struggled to feel them on exercises. And, you know, it, like, Just don't knock it till you try it, I guess. He did try it, but, I mean, it seems perfectly fine. Like, he sa what he said was that it has this ridiculous strength curve where it's like, oh, it's it's from super hard to completely easy. It's like the pre preacher curls are the exact same. The only difference is that you're not, your, el your el shoulder isn't back, your elbow isn't behind your shoulder, and then, um, and you're, you're, 
elbow isn't supported on the lying dumbbell curl. And it's like, that's, but it's still the same kind of resistance profile. And everybody knows pretty sure curls are a great exercise. And so I just see no reason why this can't work. It's not something I'm going to do. I think its biggest issue is that your elbow isn't supported. And so like you're doing this weird kind of free moving shit where I don't think you can use enough weight compared to what your bicep could take in that position. But brings me back to those like cable curls. I have hypermobile elbows. You can see it from looking at my footage. I don't really ever get a full bicep stretch on, by the way, this is session five. Um, I don't get a full bicep stretch on most bicep exercises unless I go into this really snap city ROM. And I used to be very scared to do that because, you know, I watched all those NH videos about like half repping or whatever, and like protect your tendons and shit. It's like, I don't know, bro. I'll risk it because I'm just not making gains or at least as fast as I could, or I feel like I could doing it that way. It just, I feel a lot more bicep when I do these kind of ridiculous ultra lengthened exercises. And I still have my, my cannon curls that are like a normal, just a normal bicep exercise. Preacher curls are a meta bicep exercise, but they're still hyper lengthened, especially when I'm going fucking hyper extending on them. But I don't know, I feel, I feel more, and I'll see how it goes this bulk. I'm doing them at the start of all my sessions that I have biceps on because I really just want to prioritize them. And, um, I just, uh, I feel like there's a lot of room for growth there. I feel like I didn't do everything I could have as well as I could have last bulk, and I'm trying to do it better this time around. Dips are coming up again and i'll get back to what i was saying there but this is all so with the dips it's all failure training and i'm still like trying to use like i'm not jimmy bookworming it but like i'm still trying to be explosive and shit but i'm I'm not trying to half wrap like i'm getting a decent stretch and shit nothing excessive but it um it got good balance between being able to push hard and still get a, a really big range of motion that like i feel in my pecs and uh, they've been feeling great this session six. They've been feeling great. I'm, I'm uh, like every session they feel as good as the last. And so, in fact, they keep feeling better. They keep feeling better on my shoulder. My left shoulder feels less prone to feeling funny from like sketchy movements like behind the neck press or that shoulder press machine that I do. Despite like I was worried that adding in dips might add more wear and tear on my shoulder but so far it's only made it more robust so i don't know if maybe it's it's just filling in some gap in my pressing angles that just makes just is making shit more balanced or whatever i don't really fucking know what's going on but it feels good um what i want to say though because i was i was talking a lot there about like my biceps that's a goal for this bulk i have my deadlift i want to get it up everything else i'm hypertrophy selling but i should just touch on like my goals for this next bulk when i eventually start it uh 420 rdl is no big deal really i want to kind of yeah focus on just getting my deadlift stronger because it's a strong point i want to get stronger but then aside from that chest and delts really need to come up i mean you can see i'm, I'm dipping under a plate it's like, yeah, there's some adaptation there from the fact that I haven't done dips in a long time and I need, and it's just positional strength, but it's, I'm dipping under a plate. Like that's fucking sad, right? Like, and I'm using the 65s on dumbbell incline, it, not even with some ultra temple technique, just like actually just struggling against it. It's not good. And, um, uh, I, uh, so I'm putting, I'm putting a lot of focus into them and the chest and delts which is why like you can see so much volume on them in my training i want more tricep too but i um a lot of i want more lateral head because i you what the fuck did i do here oh <laughs> but um i want more lateral head because my arms look really thin from the front and i feel like that's kind of the missing link a lot of people 
are so focused on long head because it does add the most mass to your arm and it is a very aesthetic 3d muscle and you don't want it to be small and i'm still gonna be trying to grow it but it's the lateral head's still very important i feel like it's underrated in the little nh sphere or whatever and it is primarily associated with pressing strength and built with press type movements like you're just I, I just know, like, I can't really complain about it not being big enough and then have such shitty pressing numbers like I do. It's it's kind of related, right? Like, it's, um, can't, can't just keep hitting more long head isolations and hoping it'll get priority growth if my presses aren't moving or whatever. I feel like it's just, it's, it's not going to get the results I want. But, um, okay, here were pull-ups. In my comments, you know, there was some discussion about, like, okay, wait. So, right there, I accidentally hit that bag. Uh, I had to move it out of the way. But, um, on, like, there was some discussion in the comments, like, why the fuck am I so bad at pull-ups, despite the fact that I have big lats? Uh, to answer that, I have, like, two things to say, or three things. One, I don't know. Two, like, maybe it's genetics. I might not be that neural, but my lats just have, like, you know, they, they can grow more muscle than they have, like, the neural adaptations to recruit but i am strong on rows and shit part of it i think is because i think my lats might just this might sound dumb to say but like they might not be as big as it might seem just because like i have a good v taper and shit my lats look good and whatever but i also have a small waist and so i feel like that makes them look bigger right like i don't want to downplay it too much like they're definitely i'm definitely weak for my size on my back but i know people with big fucking backs like huge uh natty like i'm not talking about fucking ifbb pros here and shit like but like i know people with big backs and um and my back looks good it can compare but it's like i don't know it's just missing a couple pounds of muscle be really be a big back so Combined with the fact that I have a really short tor torso and super long legs that I, I'm like, I have a torso of like a really short dude with carrying like a really tall guy's legs up. It's kind of like already wearing a weight belt from the get go. And then I just also never train them with full ROM. Uh, and strength is positional. This is like all the things that we theorize like why maybe... I'm so bad at pull-ups compared to my size. I don't know, though. But, um... We'll see, maybe, if, if it is neural, and my... Then maybe I might be... Because now I'm able to do pull-ups with decent enough form to kind of get something out of them, and I'm progressing decently, consistently. We'll see, maybe, if I can, um... I don't know, like, get some quick strength on them from neural adaptation... But um, for now, I don't know what's going on with that. And I want them to get stronger just because I feel like it's not even just for my lats. I, I get, like, good stimulus from those pullovers you saw me doing and from rows and shit. But um, it's just kind of like the, the other muscles of the back, the smaller details, like the teres and all these other muscles that come through on a pull-up, especially at lockout where I'm weakest. Like everybody's weakest at lockout but i'm like noticeably weak on the walkout like e excessively so and um i just feel like there's a lot of more non-lat muscles in the pull-up that i also see on a lot of guys that are strong at pull-ups they won't even have like some guys they won't even have the craziest lats but they'll have these teres that look like tumors under their armpit like weird sh weird muscles going on around their rotator cuff area that like, I couldn't even fucking name. Uh, just, they have lines and shit that I just don't know can be there. But, um, yeah, I just feel like there's benefits associated with that, which um, I might get from trying to be stronger on them if I, yeah, if I prioritize them. So, that I don't know, that's kind of what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to run the Matthews lot routine for them because... I'm only doing them twice a week, and it's a different variation each time. So I can't do that, like, for the dips. I can because it's the same variation three times a week, exactly how he says. Like, he says do three times a week. 
And, um, and it's working well so far, uh, but uh, I'm not going to do that for the pull-ups. I'm just going to add weight and, like, just do my best. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's things that, because I, like, interrupted myself by seeing something in the footage that I wanted to talk about, uh, where I went on, like, some tangent about something and then it, it didn't get complete. I didn't get to the conclusion I wanted to, but, um, I don't know. I've never done this voiceover thing. Not once. Take your meds if you think I have. Um, so I, yeah, I, apologies if it's very disorganized and I edged you by saying something you were super fucking interested in and, and then I just went off and talked about some other bullshit. Nobody, I, th- I talked about GVS and bicep stretch for like 15 fucking minutes and I don't know I don't remember if I even came to a conclusion with it I but uh nobody gives a shit nobody gives a shit that's all I have to say fucking comment some shit that you might want to hear me talk about because I am doing these videos weekly now I just don't want to edit every day i don't fucking care to do that i don't really care about growing the channel you know my current viewer base i love i love how it's this gate kept little space my friend keeps telling me like because i i, I want to focus on shit outside the outside the gym i want to kind of lock in more in life get my shit like back together after what f bed did to me but um so i'm trying to deprioritize the gym a little in terms of how much time I put in like I still want to keep putting the same energy in fact more calculated effort but I want to put less time into it I don't want to be in the gym as long I don't want to spend all this time editing I don't want to I want my meals to be meal prepped and then ate at certain times quickly so they don't consume my day just doing that and I want to invest my time into more things like I used to be a lot more financially locked in um and none of you know the war because I've, I've never talked about this on the channel i'm not going to but i used to make a lot of money um i, I it was freelance work that's the most i'll say it wasn't furry porn but uh, it was freelance work and i was just so on my grind back then and then fbed took over my life and uh i don't make that money anymore it's it's um it's something that's like i've been wanting to get back into like just finance shit and whatever but that takes a lot of time investment, and um, and I can't just be doing this YouTube shit all the time. But what I was saying about what I think said, said, said something about my friend, he's been pressuring me like, oh, you know, you're fucking, YouTube is probably your best bet. Like, you've already scaled that a bit. You have a channel. You have some viewers. You can probably do something like that. It's like, I don't want to. Not right now, at least. I don't personally think I, as someone, have enough to give to demand people's attention like i i my physique isn't good enough my strength isn't good enough and this isn't me pitying myself it's just because i know they're so far from what i'm capable of they're so far from just like the standard that's in my mind this isn't me being some fucking whiner about fucking body dysmorphia or whatever like no it's it's just i'm just i'm an intermediate bro maybe deadlifts i'm considered advanced by people's standards i think relative to my abilities i'm probably late intermediate but um i'm I'm just mostly all around just an intermediate lifter so i just don't feel like there's enough for me to give because you know when you're someone that kind of reaches that higher echelon of achievement you you there is some experience you gain by doing that which is not replicable like you any any kind of mid-level person like me can learn a lot from others and then regurgitate it but you you just gain something by having walked a walk yourself and this a value you can give to others that you just don't when you're just stuck in theory and you haven't really made anything of yourself yet so all i really care to do with this channel is just document my training um and then like if i make something of myself like if i achieve something with it you know, I get the 700 pound conventional or more that I want. I fucking get as jacked as I want, shit like that. Then, sure, maybe I can provide value someday. Like I could, I could, or at least be like 
someone worth paying attention to if I just didn't even care about making like informative content, but just made entertainment. But as far as it is now, like I just don't feel like I have any right to demand anyone's attention. So anyone who's already on board, like all my shit, nobody cares about enthusiasts, you know, I'll, I'll just, I would rather de-invest myself in the channel in terms of like trying to make it grow. I don't really care. Still give to the community I've built because I like, yeah, I like this little space where like I have a little place on the internet where I can just be myself, do my thing with, you know, a lot of like-minded people that just fucking, I don't know, have the same sense of humor and shit. And it's, uh, I, I have, I have fun with it. And I think that's the biggest thing for me. I, I don't really, yeah, so that's why I'm taking energy out of it. But in return, I don't know, maybe I'll try and make what videos I post a bit more personal like this. Like I'll, I'll get on and I'll talk and I, um, cause for one, I just, for a video this long, I don't want to find songs to put over it. You guys have no idea how hard that is. Cause I don't want to seem like I'm reusing the same song every time. I don't want to seem like my brain is a, is just, I just have an algorithm brain. Or I'm just using algorithm songs. Like, Oh, this is the fucking trending hyper pop song of the, of the week. I have to use this. Like, no. So I put way too much time into making it seem like I don't put any time in music in my videos. Uh, and I just don't want to do that. I'd rather just talk. I'd rather talk. So um, if you have anything you want to hear, write it down. If it's some fucking ridiculous nonsense, I'll answer it um, within reason. And uh, yeah, so I don't know if like if you want to hear more about my diet, I'm going to actually make a video soon about how I plan to lock in my diet because there's going to be a free resource that I can give that I made for myself but it's just so autistic and in-depth that it will be of use to anyone. And uh, and I will post it. But um, that's only after I prove to myself that... Or after I am bulking for like a week or two and I know it's working for me. But um, yeah, if you want to hear more about my diet, my training, my fucking... Like, gel routine or something, you can just comment it i'll answer almost anything um and um yeah that's all i have to say i'm gonna go eat this beef and rice i was hoping to eat it while recording this you guys can get a little asmr but i was just too locked in to talking and the clips were flashing too fast on my screen so, yeah, you, uh, I don't know, it fucking sucks to be you, you don't get to listen to that. But yeah, that's all. Have a good night. I'm gonna go to bed early. Bye-bye.